Hello Excel users, welcome back to our Excel VBA series. Today's tutorial will delve deeper into the concept of arrays, specifically focusing on multi-dimensional and dynamic arrays for data manipulation in Excel VBA. In our previous video, we've covered one-dimensional arrays. Today, we'll take a step further to discuss multi-dimensional arrays. A multi-dimensional array is an array with more than one dimension. Think of it like a table with rows and columns, each representing a dimension. Let's open up our VBA editor to understand this better. Here we have a piece of code. This piece of code creates a two-dimensional array. The first number, 5, represents the number of rows, and the second number, 3, represents the number of columns. In this way, our array becomes like a table that can store values. This is very useful when we need to manage and manipulate data with multiple categories. Now let's see this multidimensional array in action. If you follow along, you can run this code by pressing F5 or clicking the Run button in your VBA editor. Once we do that, you'll notice that the four values we stored in the array get printed in the immediate window. It might seem like nothing much is happening here, but it's a significant demonstration of how we can store and retrieve data from a multidimensional array. We are assigning values to specific positions in our two-dimensional array and then retrieving them. Remember, the first index is the row number and the second is the column number. So, my array 1, 1 corresponds to the first row and first column of our imaginary table, and so forth. In this way, we can manipulate data stored in a structured format like a table within our VBA code. In a practical scenario, let's imagine that you are a sales analyst for a company that operates in multiple regions and sells a range of products. You have a data set where each region is represented by a row and each product type is represented by a column. Within this data set, the intersections of the rows and columns contain the sales figures for each product in each region. Now, instead of accessing this data in a cumbersome way, by constantly referring to cell references, or by using multiple separate variables, you can use a multi-dimensional array to streamline this process. Now let's move on to dynamic arrays. Unlike static arrays, where we set a fixed size at declaration, dynamic arrays allow us to change the size of the array during runtime. Let's look at this example. We begin by declaring an array named myArray without specifying its size. This means that currently, the array myArray doesn't have a defined size and cannot hold any values yet. Next, the line redim myArray5 is where we set the initial size of the array. The keyword redim is short for redimension, and it allows us to specify or change the dimensions of the array. After this line, myArray becomes an array that can hold up to six values, indices from 0 to 5. We then assign the values 10 and 20 to the first and second positions in the array, respectively. We use debug print to print the values stored in these positions to the immediate window. Now let's say we need to store more values than we initially thought. This is where the real power of dynamic arrays comes into play. The line redim preserve my array 10 resizes the array so it can hold 11 values, indices from 0 to 10, instead of just 6. The keyword preserve is crucial here. It tells VBA to keep the values that are already in the array, 10 and 20 and just add more space. Without the preserve keyword, the existing values would be lost when the array is resized. After resizing the array, we go ahead and store a new value 30 in the seventh position, my array 6, and again print it to the immediate window. By the way, you might be wondering why we're storing the value 30 in the seventh position, indicated as myArray6. In VBA, arrays by default start at index 0. This means that the first position in the array is the 0 index. So, when we're assigning myArray6 equals 30, we are actually storing the value 30 in the seventh position of our dynamic array. Remember, 
This zero-based indexing is a fundamental concept to keep in mind when working with arrays in VBA. It's an easy detail to overlook, but it can help prevent common mistakes, like off-by-one errors, during programming. To tie this back to our main point, this example really drives home how dynamic arrays can adapt to the changing requirements of data storage, whether you're dealing with fluctuating data from a file, a database, or an Excel sheet, you can see how dynamic arrays provide that much-needed flexibility to handle varying amounts of data in an efficient way. It's these real-world scenarios where understanding and leveraging the power of dynamic arrays can significantly enhance your data manipulation capabilities. Now let's quickly look at a practical example. We have sales data for three different regions and for three different products in our Excel sheet. We want to calculate the total sales for each product across all regions. We first import this data into a 3x3 multidimensional array, sales, where each row corresponds to a region and each column corresponds to a product. Then we calculate the total sales for each product by summing across all regions in our array, storing the results in a separate one-dimensional array, total sales. Finally, we write these total sales figures back to our worksheet. When you run the code, you will see the total sales for each product appear in the row below the table in our sheet. This showcases how we can leverage multidimensional arrays to efficiently manipulate data directly in our Excel sheet, simulating a real-world application of these concepts. We've covered quite a bit today, and these are foundational concepts that will form the basis for more complex operations with arrays. Remember, practice makes perfect. All the codes used in this tutorial are in the description below for your convenience. Feel free to tweak them and see what happens. Thank you for watching. Don't hesitate to leave any questions or share your results in the comments section. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Happy coding!